Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. So OBS Studio Portable Mode, what is it? Why would you use it? OBS Studio Portable Mode allows you to open a second instance of OBS Studio and have a completely independent set of scenes, sources, settings. Why is this actually useful? Well, first of all, if you're a YouTuber, for example, or if you're making video content, it means that you can open one instance of OBS Studio and record with another instance what's happening on that version of OBS Studio. You're essentially not not recording on the same version that you're demonstrating and that means that you're not seeing that mirroring effect that you'll sometimes see on OBS Studio videos but there's loads of other reasons as well you may want to test plugins you may want to test new settings or maybe you just might have one profile on OBS Studio for streaming and a completely different profile for example to record videos or something like that another key reason is you can actually use two versions of OBS Studio one to record your gameplay and another to record just your cam both in the full HD 1080p another reason is you may simply just use OBS Studio on, on different computers. So you may just want to be able to stick it on like a USB stick or on a file or email it or something like that. This just allows you to have a portable version of your existing profiles if you want to have like a mirrored version of it, but use it on different PCs. Say for example, a laptop or at a friend's house or something like that. So OBS Studio portable mode is really, really useful for all kinds of different applications. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can set up portable mode on OBS Studio and hopefully you find it useful if you do hit the like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel and let's go Okay, so there is some information about this. If you want to refer to OBS's official documentation, you can visit this link here. I'll link it in the description below. But this essentially gives you all the instructions that I'm going to be showing you in this video. You just need to be aware that the file paths for the images and the other sources might be different if you use it on a different PC. What you're probably best doing there is having some sort of cloud link where you're linking to cloud and then you can just log into that cloud source and relinking should be quite easy for those media files. But if you're using it for any of the other applications I mentioned other than on a different computer this won't be an issue for you the first thing you're going to need to do is download the zip file for the latest version of obs studio you can do this by visiting the github then you simply select the one that makes sense for you i'm going to select this windows file here this will then automatically download a zip file of the latest OBS Studio version. Now, once you've got this, you're going to need to install this. So what we want to do is just extract this. I normally do this by going into the folder, dragging all the files and dropping it into wherever you want to place this. All this will do is extract all the files rather than being in a zip folder. And then essentially we've got a brand new version of OBS Studio in a different location to where it would normally be located. A completely new version, a new installation of OBS studio here and we're going to be making this version the obs studio portable version now there's a couple of different ways that you can set up portable mode first of all you can right click new and have a text document and we're just going to rename this portable underscore mode click enter on that so this is a text document you want to make sure that this is showing as a text so that'll be portable underscore mode dot txt now this file in itself doesn't do anything but it just tells obs studio that it wants to open in portable mode now you'll know that this has worked because then when you go into the bin and the 64 bit and you open up obs studio 64 it should open up a clean version of obs studio this will have none of your existing settings there'll be no scenes and all of that sort of stuff so if you go to scenes and collections there's absolutely none here another way that you'll know that this has worked is that this config file will appear here and these are just all the configurations for this particular portable version of obs studio but if that doesn't work you can go into bin we can go to 64 bit again and on this obs 64 application file what you want to do is you want to click on obs 64 on the application file right click it and we're going to go send to and we'll send a shortcut of this to the desktop and all this will do is create a link between that shortcut on the desktop and this particular file so this file becomes like a target essentially so once we've created that and we go on the desktop we'll see there's here a shortcut version of it and when we right click on this we can look on properties we now have this target here. Now the way that we turn this target version of it into a portable version is we type space dash dash portable and click apply. Click OK on that. This will now open in portable mode whenever we use it and we can obviously place this shortcut anywhere. So I'm just going to cut that shortcut. I'm going to put it back into my downloads folder in the bin file here next to this version here. So we've essentially got two versions here. The version that opens on its own and the portable mode of it. As long as we open up this shortcut it will open in portable mode so i'm just going to double click that and open it and we can see here we've got a completely new version of it that is open so we're sort of halfway there now we've been able to create a second instance of 
OBS Studio and it'll operate completely independently. Now, if you want, you can manually configure that to do whatever you want it to do. Create a whole new set of scenes and the settings will be specific to that version of OBS Studio and not necessarily to your existing version that you have installed in the app data folder as normal. However, if you're looking to copy over all of your existing settings from your existing OBS Studio to the new portable version, say for instance, if you want to run this across a different PC or you want to be able to take that and put it onto a new PC or something like that, this is exactly the process you would take. So we need to find percentage, app data, percentage, Want to search for this we'll have a window that pops up we want to go into obs studio here so what we're going to do here is we're going to select all of this from my existing app data installation of obs studio i'm going to go back to the downloads page where i've got this i'm going to go into config and obs studio and this is where all the portable version of the configurations are so if you've made any changes to the portable version they'll all be housed in this section here but i'm just going to basically duplicate what i've got in my existing obs studio and place it here essentially so if i control paste in that so it's now copying over all of the OBS data from my existing installation to the portable version. So it'll essentially both be exactly the same. So now that all the configs, profile scenes and settings are all copied over to the portable version, now I want to go into the bin and open up the shortcut version. It should pull across all my existing scenes, but in a second instance of OBS Studio. I can now see I've got all of these different settings here, all my different scenes and sources and so on and so forth. But as you can see in the bottom hand corner here, I'm running one version and another version that I'm recording in right now. So we've got two versions. Now all you need to do to make this truly portable is put these on some sort of file somewhere. You can either have them on the cloud, have them on a dongle or something like that. And then you can use them on a different computer and have all the settings. But again, just bear in mind that all of your links to the media files need to be existing on that new folder as well. So the way that I got around that when I transferred and upgraded to a new PC was I just had everything on a OneDrive personal file here and basically was able to have the exact same links and targets and it just worked for me and it saved a hell of a lot of time. So there you go. That's how you can set up portable mode in OBS Studio. Really useful for a number of different reasons. Hopefully you did find it useful. If you did, smash that like button for me and I'll see you later.